Welcome to Ruby on Rails webinar series from jpassion.com. So we have learned a lot of things in this course and uh, we are going to cover our last topic in this session which is Rails application deployment to the cloud. So I'm going to actually start with hands-on app and uh, I have some presentation but uh, it's not really that much information so we're going to actually do uh, deployment right uh, from the start of this presentation. So we are going to deploy a Rails application on uh, Heroku and NGINYAR, two most popular uh, the uh, cloud uh, such a service and uh, so we're going to actually start with uh, Heroku. So a bunch of steps. So first we're going to actually create our Rails application. So you can use any Rails application of your choice to deploy uh, Heroku or Engineer. So just for the, uh, the sake of uh, this exercise, we are starting from scratch. So I just created a deploy app. The name of the application is deploy app, which I've done that already. And uh, then I am going to uh, scaffold on student. So let me just go to uh, deploy app and we're going to perform scaffolding so rails generate scaffold and student and uh, name string and age integer okay and uh, then we are going to create the students table uh, using migration and uh, then we are going to uh, we are going to add some C data to sys.db file. So let's create the table first, rake db migrate. And then we're going to add uh, these three lines of code to sys.db file. So db file. So I'm going to just copy these three lines of code here. So basically we have a three student record and we are going to perform db seed db seed so we created those three records that we have in the seed file and and then we're going to change the route rb file so that we can have students that index uh, all right so routes rb file so here and uh, we're going to change this one to student. And we are going to delete index.html file. Okay. All right. Now we are going to uh, change uh, the, uh, um, the uh, gem file. Uh, because in Heroku and also Engine Yard, the default uh, database they use is the uh, Postgres SQL database. So here we are going to change the uh, gem file so that we are going to use SQLite 3 only for development and for production we are going to use the Postgres SQL database. So let's change uh, gem file and here we are going to say group development and, and do And, and, okay, and uh, then we are going to add Postgres database for production. Okay, so we save all these changes. And uh, then we are going to bundle install because we changed the gem file. Now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to use without production. So for this installation, we are not generating anything production because we are going to actually use Heroku and an engine yard. Uh, so we don't have to create any production, uh, the, uh, the gem here. So we're going to actually use bundle install, bundle install dash dash without production. Okay. All right. That's done. So now we are going to run the application to make sure that Abby is actually up and running. I mean, Abby is actually correctly uh, created. And uh, when we run the application, we should see the three records. Okay. So, all right, so it's done. So let's try local host. 
All right, so that's what we see. All right, so we know that this application is up and running correctly. So I'm going to just stop this one because we don't need this anymore. So let's move on. Now, we are going to, first of all, uh, the, uh, deploy this application and push this application to GitHub. So both Engine Yard and Heroku requires your application to be from the uh, GitHub. Okay, so we are going to create a repository using JIT in it. So here we say, for those of you who are not really familiar with the JIT and GitHub, I recommend you to take a look at the uh, uh, JavaPassion.com. If you go to courses, and um, and we have uh, Java development tools, and uh, you uh, you can actually take a look at the labs of JIT and GitHub. Okay. All right, so we are going to install, we are going to create the repository by saying JIT in it. So it will create the .zip file, okay? So this .zip file directly contains everything about the JIT. And then we are going to add all the files of this project into staging area. So you're going to say JIT add and dot. So that means current directory and everything under this current directory will be added to the staging area. And, uh, and then we'll actually commit. Right, so that's added. And now if you say JIT status, you can see all these files are ready to be committed. Okay. All right. Now we are going to make a commitment. So we're gonna say JIT commit. JIT commit and minus M and the message. This is our first commit. Okay, something like that. So they are committed. And now if you say JIT status, and you can see everything is committed. All right, so we now have a local JIT uh, the, the repository. Now we're going to actually create the GitHub uh, repository. So you're going to go to zipHub.com. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, this one, the browser. So we are going to have uh, Zip hub. Oh yeah, so this is the zip, uh, the hub, uh, the GitHub uh, directory, uh, the website. Okay, so I'm already logged in. Okay, so now we are going to create the uh, new repository. So we are actually using GitHub, uh, GitHub as the uh, new repository. So we are going to actually create the uh, uh, new repository. So I'm going to actually have this one to be here. Right, so click repository, and uh, then we are going to create a new repository here. Okay, so click new repository, and then we are going to actually give a name. So you're going to give a name, deploy app, like this. Okay, uh, description is optional, and we're going to actually make it public so that everybody can see it. And uh, we don't need the readme file, so we're going to just uh, you know create the uh, repository. Yeah, so create repository. So that's that. So we just create the repository. And then what you're going to do is, uh, then you're going to actually see this uh, URL. Okay, so that's what we see here. Okay, so this is the HTTPS URL and this is the SSH version. Okay, all right, so we are going to use this one. You can use either. And uh, so what you're going to do next is we are going to uh, put, we are going to create the uh, uh, the uh, remote. So basically you are going to you know basically you are going to say JIT remote add origin and this. Okay, so you're basically making this JIT uh, the GitHub uh, the uh, the location as uh, your uh, origin. Okay, so we are going to just copy this. Just copy one more time. Control C. Okay. All right. So it's done. Now we are going to push uh, our code to GitHub. So we are going to use git push. So git push upward and origin and master. So basically what you have is a master branch on your local uh, repository. And you are basically you know, pushing your master branch to the origin, uh, which is a GitHub. So I'm going to just copy this one. OK. 
Okay, now the uh, then it asks me the username and password. Okay, so let me try one more time. I think I actually incorrectly typed. Okay, all right. So I am uh, the uh, the I just successfully pushed the uh, my master branch code on my local system to GitHub. Okay, so that's done. Now, if I refresh my page here, now you are going to see all the code that I just uploaded. Okay, so this is the code. Uh, you know, this is the uh, the uh, deploy app application. Okay. All right. Now we are ready to uh, deploy this application to Heroku. So you want to go to Heroku and actually sign it up, sign yourself up. So I've done that already. So basically, this is the process. You go to Heroku website and you enter your email address, and then you're going to have an email. Then you're going to just confirm it. Okay. So confirm email sent. Then you confirmed it. And uh, then you are going to just uh, send email, and then you're going to actually provide your password. Uh, this is the password that you are going to create. Okay. All right. And once you're done that, then you are going to be in Heroku's site. Okay. All right. Now the second thing you have to do is installation of Heroku Tool Belt. So this is the toolkit. Uh, in which uh, it lets you uh, perform Heroku operations at the command line. Okay, so it's basically a bunch of uh, the command line utility programs. Okay, so you go to this website, and depending on your operating system, you can just download it and install it. On my system is Windows, so I click this one, and uh, you can actually customize. You know, basically what you need is Heroku client. Okay. Uh, since I have a JIT, a Git SSH already on my system, you know, I didn't actually click this one. Okay. By the way, for Windows environment, by the way, you know that the Windows environment is not the most desired uh, development environment for Rails application development, but I happen to have a Windows here. Uh, one of the uh, uh, quirkiness on using Windows uh, with Heroku is that, you know, once you install this tool belt, it actually added some path to your uh, the uh, it changed your uh, the path environment environment variable and uh, those environment variables is actually causing some problems so you have to actually delete those environment variables okay uh, so you know basically it adds like a git uh, even though I didn't click this one it still add the git uh, directory to my environment uh, the uh, path environment variables so you have to delete all those things okay so basically you go to the control panel. And uh, then, you know, the system path at the end, you know, I think it added like a three, uh, the uh, path, okay? So you just delete all those, okay? All right, now, once you've done that, then you should be able to do perform Heroku, okay? So this is the command line tool that I just mentioned. So let me actually just show it, since I have installed everything correctly, so I can say Heroku. And uh, it gives you all the, uh, uh, the commands that you can execute. And if you wanna see the version, Okay, and you can see the version right here. So I know that I have installed the Heroku tool bag correctly. Okay, all right, so let's move on. Now, you can tell, uh, you can find out uh, the, all the application that have been deployed in Heroku by saying Heroku apps. And at the moment, I don't have any, okay? So it will say you have no apps, like this, okay? All right, now we are ready to deploy uh, the application, deploy app application to Heroku. So you have to log in first, okay? So you're gonna say Heroku and log in. And you have to provide your credential. So you have to provide email address, com and password, okay? Now you're logged in. All right, so authentication has been successful. All right. Now you are going to create an application. So basically, it's going to you know create a placeholder for your application. So you say uh, Heroku create, and that uh, this is the name of the application. Now, if I try this, okay. By the way, if you don't specify the name of it, then the Heroku will create the uh, some, uh, and it will create a name of the application automatically for you. Because I want to actually use my own name, I can, you know, I want to just say uh, Hiroku, create and deploy app. 
Now it says it cannot, I cannot use the underscore as, as a name of the application. So that's basically what it says. Name must start with a letter and can only contain uh, the uh, lowercase letters, numbers, and dashes. Okay, so I'm going to use a different name. So Heroku and create, and I'll say my, I'm going to use the uh, dash instead of underscore. Yeah, so the, it doesn't allow, it doesn't allow underscores. So I'm going to use the dash. Deploy app like this. Okay. So it created an application on Heroku now. Okay. And basically, what it does is that the uh, it also create the remote. Uh, the uh, uh, it also create a remote uh, the in Heroku. Okay. So if you say uh, the uh, uh, like uh, get remote uh, like this, then you see you have in fact the uh, two remote. One is in GitHub and the other one is the Heroku. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we are going to push uh, the code to Heroku. So you're basically pushing your master branch to Heroku. Okay, so git and push and Heroku and master. So now our code is being pushed to Heroku and uh, it's going to actually install, you know, the everything that is needed, as you can see right here. Okay. And now if I say Heroku apps, then I should be able to see that my application has been deployed. Now, Heroku is actually relatively fast. So it shouldn't take more than a minute or two. So let's just wait for this. So it's installing all the gems. Okay. I think we're almost done. And now the only thing you have to do is you can just call Heroku open, then it's going to open the application. Okay. So we're going to say, and then you should be able to see the application being deployed. Okay, so let's try that. Heroku open. I'm going to actually use this one. Now you're going to ex experience uh, an error condition. Like this time you like this so we are sorry about something went wrong okay <laughs> the reason is because you know we are running our application in production environment but we have not performed any DB migration or DB seed on production database so you know basically if you take a look at the uh, the uh, so you can actually take a look at what happened by saying Heroku logs okay and this logs in fact indicate so let me actually see the code you know it's basically uh, having a problem performing some active record operation against the database table okay so in fact it can see relation students does not exist which means that you know the uh, we do not have uh, database tables okay so what you have to do is we have to perform db migrate on the production database. So the way you can do is Heroku run rake db migrate. Okay, so I'm going to just type it here. Heroku and run rake db migrate. Okay, so now you are going to see the table has been in fact created. Okay, once this is done. Okay, so you can see a table has been created. Okay, all right, so now we're going to refresh the page. All right, now the application is up and running. 
Okay, but what happened to those three student records that we have added through DBC? Again, the reason we don't see that is because we have not uh, performed the DBC on Heroku production uh, development environment. Okay, so again, what we have to do is to perform DBC. So we can say again, Heroku run rake DBC. Okay, so the uh, DB seed is now performed against the uh, production database. Okay. All right, now we are going to refresh the page. Now you see three student records being displayed. Okay, so our application is up and running correctly on Heroku. All right, so again, if you say Heroku apps, you should be able to see my deploy app is in fact deployed. Okay, now you can also run the Rails console by using a Heroku command. So let's try that Heroku and run console. And uh, we'll take a look at what is the environment that is being used by just saying rails.env okay? and uh, it will say production. Rails.env. Okay, so you can say it's running on production environment. And now let's display all the students uh, that we have on this application. So we should have a three. So let's try try put and student all and two. We are going to display in the YAML format. Okay, and you should see these three student records that we have. Okay, all right. That's pretty much it. It's uh, uh, one thing that I haven't actually mentioned is that, you know, because uh, the uh, I have already created uh, the uh, uh, public key. So if you, in fact, take a look at, let me actually show you uh, uh, the GitHub hands-on lab uh, tools and uh, here we go. So in exercise two, uh, in my system, I have already created uh, SSH key uh, the, uh, for the zip account. Okay, so that's the reason we haven't deal with anything. So basically, I have created uh, the uh, the uh, the zip up, uh, key. Okay, and uh, you know basically that is the public key that we have to copy to ZipHub, which I have done that as part of this zip up uh, exercise. Okay. Uh, you know, if you haven't done this exercise, then you have to follow the exercise to a zip hub account. So zip uh, the uh, the uh, basically this is a public key that we have in zip hub, uh, and uh, that is basically used for identification between the systems. Okay. All right. So now, if you say Kiroko keys, and you can see it's using the the public key that I have on my system. Okay. So let's just ask key, and uh, Hiroku. Case. So since I have already the public key in my system, it's actually using it. Okay, but if you don't have it, then uh, you have to you have to uh, do that. You have to actually create this uh, public key. Okay. In fact, if I go to my home directory, so that is I'm gonna actually go to my home directory and dot sh ssh. Okay, and you can see this is the uh, public key. This is the uh, private key. And this is a public key. Okay, so this is the public key that I can give to uh, GitHub or Heroku. And uh, whenever I'm communicating with Heroku or GitHub, they since they have this public key information, they know that who I am. So basically, I'm actually being authenticated to, through this, uh, you know, the uh, public key they have. Okay, so if I actually see this, uh, you know, the uh, public key, uh, you can see this is the same public key that Heroku has. Okay, so this is the public key. The first time you're actually using Heroku, uh, it will actually detect the uh, public key in your SH, SSH directory. Then it will actually have that as a public key. So next time I'm actually communicating with Heroku, it knows that you know I'm the one that I'm claim that uh, you know the, it's basically uh, it, the, my authentication is done through this. Okay. All right, uh, add-ons. Uh, Heroku has a lot of add-ons, okay? And the one that is being used for my application right now is actually only Postgres SQL. But you can use a lot of uh, Heroku add-ons, okay? Uh, we're not really exploring those add-ons uh, in this presentation and hands-on lab. But, 
Uh, this is Hiroko PS is actually process. Okay. All right, uh, Hiroko from the web. Now I am going to explore some of the uh, Hiroko uh, features uh, from the web. So let me just go to here. So I uh, I have already logged in, I believe. Oh, I have not. Okay, so let me just log in. So you should have uh, the uh, my application. So this is the application that I've deployed, right? Now you can actually see the resources that this being uh, is using, okay? And you can see all the activities, okay? So the things I've done before, and you can collaborate, it's just like a GitHub in a sense. You know, you can actually collaborate with other people and the settings, okay? In the settings, you can actually delete the application. So if you click delete, uh, then it will delete the application, okay? All right, so resources and, uh, you know, so delete the application. Uh, so let's just delete the application. I'm gonna just delete. And you have to actually, you know, provide uh, the, uh, uh, the name of the application before you delete. It's just making sure that, you know, you, are, you know what you're doing. So I'm just deleting this application. Now it's being deleted, okay? So even though, now if I actually refresh the page, then it will say, you know, there's no application. Uh, this one, yeah, I think it still have some trace, but, uh, you know, if I actually go over here, yeah, it says, you know, this page you're looking for does not exist, okay? All right, so that is Heroku. Now let's move on to Engine Yard. So Engine Yard is another popular cloud uh, service and uh, both of these actually, you can actually deploy not only in Rails, not only Rails application, bunch of other, but you can, you know, deploy other application types such as Node.js kind of application. All right, uh, now, Engine Yard is they actually running their application on Linux. And, uh, you know, so when you are building your application on Windows, uh, you have to actually make some changes in your gem.log file. So let's take a look at the gem.log file. By the way, the, um, uh, the Engine Yard guys are really, really responsive. So I was having some issues with this one this morning and they were actually pretty responsive in, in terms of actually correcting. They can actually find out what is going on on my deploy application and uh, you know you can just chat right there. You can do the chatting right there and they just helped me right there. So I, I was able to fix it uh, in a few seconds, a few minutes. All right, so if you take a look at the gem file, log file, okay? Uh, if you build your application on Windows, we are going to see some of the some traits that you are building this application on Windows, like x86, Ming W32. So this is going to cause a problem when you deploy your application on Engine Yard. So you have to remove uh, this. Okay. So in fact, there are three places: here, here, and here. So we have to manually remove these things in gem uh, file log. So I'm going to remove this guy. And I'm going to remove on line number 93. And here I have to change this one platform to Ruby. Okay. All right. So save the change. Right. And then I have to uh, the uh, the uh, uh, I have to uh, the um, commit the changes. Okay. So we are going to here. Let me just go to the uh, application directory. All right, so now uh, the uh, since we changed the uh, gem uh, gem file log, okay. So if I say JIT status, it should say that there is actually a file uh, that needs to be added to the staging area. So we have to do that. So I'm going to just use the star, you know, JIT add everything, okay. But since we have only one file that has been changed, okay. So if I say JIT status. And uh, it says, you know, this file has been changed and it's ready to be committed. So I'm going to commit. So this time I'm going to say JIT commit. And the message is going to be uh, changed uh, gem file. Log. Okay, something like this. So we committed the change. Okay. Now we're going to actually, uh, you know, push the change to the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the here to the origin. Okay. So let's just get push minus u origin 
master. We have actually two origins right now, right? You know, one is in GitHub, the other one is actually Heroku. But since you are using Engine Yard, uh, you know, we, we only concern with the uh, uh, the uh, GitHub. Okay. All right. So we uh, okay. So we provide the uh, username. Okay. So my changes on local master branch is uh, pushed to the uh, uh, the uh, remote repository. Okay. All right. Now we are going to uh, then you're going to actually perform sign up to Engine Yard if you have not done so. I have already done the sign up. Okay. So you know basically let me just to show you a sign up process. It's very simple. You click sign up and uh, you provide your email address and uh, then you you know the uh, provide the password that you want and then you click the uh, create new account and then you are going to receive an email from engine yard and then you just confirm it okay and then you're going to actually come to uh, this website uh, so here you're going to create the name for your account okay so you know use whatever name uh, account name okay uh, sanction or whatever okay and uh, then you should be able to log in okay all right. Uh, you can actually link your GitHub account. You can just, you know, click a uh, link uh, the uh, GitHub account. Uh, you could do that later. So here I've done that. Okay. And uh, linking your Engine Yard Cloud account to GitHub account gives you all the cloud. Yeah. So and authorize app. Okay. And then you are, you know, linked with the uh, GitHub account. Okay. All right. Now you should be able to create a new application or add a new application. Okay. So, you know, if you're actually adding an application later on, then you probably see this screen, so you can actually add a new application. Uh, if you're actually creating your application for the first time, then you don't probably don't see this one, but you will actually see this screen, okay? So here, let's actually try that. So I have already uh, the, uh, have an account in Engine Yard. So let me just go to engineyard.com and uh, let me log in. So my email address. Okay. Whoops. Uh, oh. Oh, that's correct. Sanction fashion gmail.com. Ah, I think actually they require different password. Let me see whether this one works. Uh, good, excellent. Okay, so I'm logged in as a sanction. Okay, so I'm going to say say password. Okay. All right. Now uh, I am going to uh, the uh, so I'm going to just go to Engine Yard Cloud. Okay. Now we're going to add a new application. Okay. So click new application, and uh, then you have to actually provide uh, the uh, uh, Git repository URI. So we are going to actually go to uh, GitHub, and uh, we are going to use this this link, okay? And then provide here, and uh, we are going to actually in application name deploy app two or something like that. And then you choose application type. Uh, you can actually choose different type. And this is certainly a rap, the Rails 3 application. So you choose Rails 3 application. OK. So we do that. OK. Now, if you are actually working with Engine Yard for the first time, it will actually ask you to copy this public key that it generated and uh, then copy this one to your GitHub. Okay, so again, you know, this is a way that GitHub and the Engine Yard actually communicating each other, meaning authenticate each other. Okay, so basically, this public key is going to be used, uh, you know, it's going to be saved into GitHub so that when uh, Engine Yard is trying to connect to uh, the uh, GitHub, you know, basically, this is used to authenticate. I uh, meaning it, this is the uh, this is the way that this is the public key that uh, GitHub knows that you know the uh, Engine Yard uh, connection is in fact the Engine Yard it claims to be. Okay, so this is actually one time deal. You don't have to do it multiple times. So here you are going to actually copy this uh, you know the uh, deploy key. This is a public key. Okay, and uh, then you are going to go to the GitHub and then you click add SSH key 
and then you add okay and you basically uh, so then you copy uh, this uh, the engine yard public key that you see here and uh, then you are going to add to github okay and you say engine yard key or whatever and add key and confirm Okay, so in your GitHub, you know, if I actually see GitHub, I have done already done this. So if I actually go to uh, the uh, the uh, uh, account settings, and if you see SSH keys, you can see I have already added this engine yard keys. Okay. All right. So again, this is one time deal. Okay. And then you are ready to deploy applications. So you are going to go. You're going to create environment name. So environment name is basically, you know, it's just a deployment environment. So you can actually name it any way you want. My first. Okay, so that's good enough. And uh, this is going to be production. And uh, application server stack is passenger three. So that's, that's good default. And uh, you know, everything is a default. Okay, and then you create the environment. Okay. All right. Now it's going to ask you to you know select environment setup. So you can actually select a single instance or staging configuration. So this is actually running a three uh, in instances. Okay. So you know for this exercise, I'm going to just use a single instance. By the way, as a free trial, you got 500 hours free. So if you use a staging configuration, then it's going to consume you know the uh, the uh, three times more than single instance. So for your exercise, just use a single instance. Okay, and then uh, the uh, click boot this configuration. So when you click this one, it's going to actually you know create assign the machine and uh, you know probably a virtual machine. Then it will create a single instance for you. Now this is going to take about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so you know I'm going to just use uh, this uh, the presentation. Uh, I'm I'm going to use the uh, lab documentation. So you know it will tell you the status. Okay, so it will tell you what's going on. Okay. So uh, it takes about, for me, on my machine, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm going to just, and once you have done that, uh, in the application, once the application is deployed, that you can click uh, visit your application. Okay. So click this one. Then you're going to see again uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, index without any student instances. The reason is because when you actually uh, deploy application, it performs DB migrate for you. Right? as a default however we have not performed db seed right so once application is deployed then you can actually perform db operation db you know, rake operation rake db seed and then you redeploy then it will perform db seed and then if you refresh the page then you are going to see uh, three student records okay and uh, you, you know you can also delete uh, this application instance from engine yard basically you have to stop first okay so click stop and uh, again, it will take about a few minutes, okay? And then you can click delete, all right? Uh, that's pretty much what I have. Again, this is still going on. And the uh, homework exercise is that choose any application of your choice and uh, deploy either Heroku or Engine Yard, okay? All right, so that's all I have. So let me just...